Welcome back, everybody, to Midday Magazine. May 1st, uh, we have, our, of course, our special edition where we get to talk with the Wood County Sheriff's Department for the entire hour. Sheriff Sean Becker in with us, along with our good friends from Wisconsin Rabbits Community Media. We shout them out. Uh, always like to uh, get a jail update when we're yeah. uh, talking, so let's go ahead and start right there. Yeah, things are moving along uh, quite nicely. Pretty much all the concrete is done on the in- inside of the building. You'll see you driving by that a lot of concrete is going out for... Um, establishing the parking areas and things like that but inside um, really is it's down to you know the painting um, getting all the glass into the cell blocks um, the, what I mean is the windows and uh, things like that pulling the wires um, so it's it's coming together really well uh, I believe that it should be done sometime in October mm-hmm. and the goal will be occupied in January or, or February but no going going really well still within budget I don't see that changing at all. So, um, yeah, things are going well. Um, We talked a little bit about the programming rooms, how many there's going to be per floor. Um, We just had a um, Mid-State Technical College come in and one of the inmates graduated with their uh, GED. Mm, Um, So that program's still going on. And we'll continue with that partnership. And then we have a a recovery prod um, graduation coming up too. Um, so, again, uh, we're going to have plenty of room to continue those programs. Now it's somewhat of a challenge just with the current facility, but you know, I just want people to know that that's a, a very important thing for for us, and we're going to continue to expand upon that. But a couple of celebrations you know, with uh, people that are in custody that are doing something while they're there, hmm. um, which uh, – I admire. Yeah, definitely. And that's really good to hear. Always mm-hmm. good to hear. It's always encouraging. I think that's the kind of thing that everybody out there can take inspiration from. Yeah. Um, I did have a, a listener ask uh, an, a, a question the other day, and I, I thought, well, I could answer it, but I also encourage you to listen to the interview coming up Wednesday and everything. There's, uh, There were some uh, questions about what or, or some un, un, uncertainty of what's going to happen with the old jail. Sure. Um, the next phase, once a new jail is done, the old jail will be torn down. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's gone beyond its life expectancy. Yeah. You know, the county board took a really strong look at that. What what can we do? And if they try to do some remodeling, it's going to cost them more to do any remodeling within the facility than to uh, to tear it down. And then we'll have some green space, uh, more parking available. And then I think uh, in time um, on the courthouse campus, they'll have an opportunity to expand if they need to mm. i know the river block uh building I, I, I don't exactly recall how long that lease is mm. but you know they're gonna have to deal with that and uh, with us vacating part of the the building they'll be able to uh, bring some departments if they need to if they want to um back from river, river block if um and that that's going to be available but you know maybe 10 20 years down the road um if the need is to build something or add on to the courthouse and uh, bring people back from river block um that opportunity is going to be there but the current uh jail um, once we're moved out of it uh, and we move into the next phase of the project um we'll get torn down i'm curious uh and this isn't so much a question just uh, more of us talking as as locals and everything i i'm curious to see how that area is going to develop once the jail is up and running and mm-hmm. uh some of the spots there get a little settled in and what we're going to do here what we're going to do there mm-hmm. um we that area has always you know done pretty well uh you mm-hmm. know with certainly with the bars and some of the other businesses that have been yeah. over there over the years so it'll be interesting to see that tie into it uh yeah. with that and everything i think it's gonna look really nice i'd love to uh you know fast forward about a year year and a half and just to see what the courthouse campus is going to look like um, the city's been working with the county really well on some you know parking options and uh, things down that road so um, nothing's finalized yet but I think there's a good plan in place that I'm hoping will get you know pushed through and uh, that whole campus is going to look really nice spent uh, the first 20 some years of my life working in construction and, and building and one of the things that we would always worry about or, or that happened every once in a while is you do out all these blueprints everything planned you got all your everything you need you get working and then you realize oh this isn't going to work or oh this isn't going to happen we've been pretty fortunate when it well, comes to that a couple of a couple times it did where um some things with the supply chain um mm, yeah. were challenging that cost a little bit more than expected but overall um you know we, you're gonna with a project that size you're gonna have some issues come up you know here and there but i'll tell you what the issues that have come up um have not been you know like oh we're gonna have to derail this project mm-hmm. or even further or we can't do it no um, you know the samuels group out of wasser 
our project manager, uh, Venture Architects out of Milwaukee. Um, they've been working just really well together. I, they've been they've been awesome, and we've been very fortunate to um, work with both of them. And we got an opportunity to uh, tour Trempolo County's jail. They both worked uh, with uh, Samuels Group and Venture. Mm-hmm. Their jails, I think, around 80 people. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's quite a bit smaller than what we're going to have, but we got to walk through and just see, okay, what the end product is going to be. And it's very similar to what mm-hmm. we're getting. You know, there's some things that um, are different. You know, I really got to give our, our jail captain, Ted Ashback, a lot of credit. He's kind of our eyes and ears, our representative of mm-hmm. the sheriff's department with the new project, mm-hmm. you know, because he's caught a couple things that, you know, this isn't what we wanted, yeah. all right, um, change it. <laughs> and and, the, and they do, you know, yeah. it just, yeah. you know, mistakes do happen. But yeah. Ted's been phenomenal to uh, to work with and just be part of the project and seeing it through. And, and then our uh, ground supervisor, Ruben Van Tassel, same thing. Yeah. You know, you have two people that complement each other so well, and they have the county's best interests. You know, not nothing against the companies that come in and do the the project. Oh, but, yeah. Um, they're there to do a job, get, yeah. get it done, and move on. Um, we have to occupy this and use this facility for 50 years. Yeah. So we got to yeah. have people representing us to making sure it's getting done. And they've been doing a phenomenal job. Getting to know Ted a little bit, he seems like the perfect guy for that job. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a really Very good Very detail-oriented mm-hmm. and um, great memory. And, yeah. Yeah. I uh, appreciate that. And, uh, and, and the update. Thank you for that. Yeah, I know you, you have a lot of notes you come in with and a yeah. number of different things you want to get to. Is there anything you wanted to touch on here? Yeah, it's a, a tough moment. Um, one of our uh, retirees, Mike Mooley, passed away. Um, we had his funeral last Monday. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, um, he is a, an icon at the department. You know, he, he worked for us for over 40 years. And that mm-hmm. is so rare in law enforcement. Yeah. You, you get, you know, usually people are looking at retirement after about 25 years, mm-hmm. especially at 30 years, people, hey, that's the goal. You know, I'm in my 50s, I got the time in, and the way it works out with us in the state retirement, we can we can retire a little mm-hmm. bit earlier than most people. Um, and he uh, he kept plugging away, and the reason being, and, and, I, and I said that just to his family, I'm like, with that support at home, you know, mm-hmm. that, that family support, that loving support that that gives us the opportunity to keep doing what we what we love, mm. you know. And he had a perfect partner with his wife Deb that was so supportive, and uh, you know we're lucky. The community was lucky to get Mike for for forty years. Uh, an icon is a uh, is a perfect word for him mm. because he started as a patrol deputy and then of course started moving his way up and through the ranks. And uh, when I started, he was. Um, Supervising the dispatch center when the sheriff's department still had it under control, and you know immediately you knew that he was like uh, the employee, the employee's employee, but as a mm-hmm. supervisor, somebody mm-hmm. that you always could count on. Mm-hmm. You know, he'd step in, and even as a supervisor, you still come and do whatever needed to be done. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's answer a call or going to jail floor to help somebody mm-hmm. out or anything like that. Um, you know, he's just a a very supportive person, and and if you had a question. <clears throat> he'd answer it you know he's just always there and i got to know him when i started here close much closer he's one of our range officers or instructors and i wasn't a great shot <laughs> and um you know and, and i knew it and mm-hmm. sort of the instructors not only not only did dave and I, i'm sorry mike but dave ryan and other people knew it as well and uh, mike spent extra time with me mm-hmm. and um, that that was very um, very helpful and gratifying for me because um, you know you could see the improvements. You know uh, my goal is to like get on our SWAT team and you know here I'm a young deputy. I want to. Mm-hmm. I came from a small department and I want. Hey, look at all these opportunities. Yeah. But hey, one step at a time. Mm-hmm. And if you can't be proficient with a firearm, well, how can we trust you on the road? Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. So uh, Mike was very uh, very helpful to me to get me through that. You know that that hump in my career to where uh, where I am now as far as with firearms, yeah. and uh, I I greatly appreciate that. But just a great person. You know, he's somebody that's brilliant. He could fix anything if you put it in front of him. Um, he'd figure it out and he'd, he'd fix it. And he had, didn't have a mean bone in his body. Yeah. And it was a tough one to see uh, see leave because he's a very you know man of faith. Yeah. And and I said this. I'm like I, I really struggled with. Um, him leaving us because, mm-hmm. you know, why would, you know, God take somebody 
not to get religious here, but mm. here's somebody that shares his faith with yeah. people who want to listen. And, you know, he'd only been retired for six years, mm. you know, and why would, you know, he be taken, yeah. you know, and, uh, but, you know, with my struggle about it, you know, I reached out to our chaplains, you know, Dave and Dan and, and had the conversation and it boils down to it's, you know, I answered the why. If, if, if it's your time, it's your time and you have yeah. to accept it. And then the reality is that the people left here in this world, you know, we have the memories that nobody can take away. Yeah. You know, and I got to read a poem that um, was very special to me called Footprints in the Sand at, at mm. his funeral that really, you know, highlights, you know, when we're, when we're struggling, you know, somebody's got your back. Yeah. You know, yeah. but Mike will be missed. Um, like I said, uh, a brilliant man, um, just, uh, just a good-hearted individual, and it's unfortunate that we all, especially his family, got kind of robbed with him mm -hmm. leaving us way too early. But that's uh, the harsh reality of life that we all go through. <clears throat> I couldn't help, uh, as you were describing this and talking about this and the situation and everything, feeling a little similarity with Carl and, yeah. and, uh, and, 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 and immediately wanting to be thankful to Mike. I didn't know Mike. Uh, I didn't get to meet him or anything, but I do appreciate him. And I, I have gotten to know you. I have gotten yeah. to know a lot of your staff. And from what I can tell, his influence is felt in the trickled effect of yeah. that. Um, so as somebody who appreciates you and your team, I can really appreciate Mike. I, and I don't mean to go off into a side end area here, but it is something that I wanted to get into with you a little bit. Um, this week, we do our National Day of Calendar on our uh, morning show on uh, WIRI and everything. And one of the things we were celebrating this week is military families. Yeah. And, and, you know, shouting them out and appreciating Love them, it. you know, how important that is uh, for our soldiers. And, and that yeah. is great. We need to do that more and more in society. Something else we could do, afford to do in society is appreciating police families and sheriff yeah. families and, and some of that. We don't see a lot of that. We don't do a lot of that as a society. And uh, I, you know better than I do. Uh, well, we all know this. None of us are here without our without somebody else. Yeah. Somebody helped us get here, whether it is a hand up or it is information they gave us or just it current with the the having somebody there with you we all none of us get yeah. through life alone so being able to you know have a more moments to be able to shout out uh you know our police families and, and yeah. some of that and and that that something that might led us into here too yeah no i, I appreciate hearing that you know in the month of may uh, i think it's the third week is police week yeah um i'd have to look at that but i know it's this month and marshall police department does a, a service up there that we take part in and then uh, uh, Donna Madison, they do as well, where it's uh, it's pretty moving, mm -hmm. you know, where you're honoring the people that, um, the Wisconsin law enforcement officers that, you know, gave the ultimate sacrifice to, you know, uh, patrol or be part of a community and somebody took their life. Um, so I appreciate hearing that because it's, uh, it's not an easy career. You know, um, we lose too many people to suicide after they, they leave our, our uh, profession. Um, we're working on that, mm -hmm. um, but we always can do better. Um, but it's it's uh, it's gratifying to hear you know you say that James that we should do that, and uh, like I've said before, it never gets old when somebody comes up to you and says, "Hey, thank you for your service." It's um, that that means something mm -hmm. uh, to all of us because too often now we don't hear that, yeah. and we're in a situation where somebody's not cooperating with us, and then then people judge us for 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 no reason, yeah. you know, just because they're not a supporter of law enforcement. But we all know that. Uh, in our hearts that most people do. Good. Yeah. And, and and Mike, we appreciate your service. We thank yeah, you. Thank we, you. We, we thank you, Mike. Great man. He'll be missed. Very much. Um, wanted to get into a salary talk a little bit with you. Yeah. Is that, I, um, I, I, we had an issue come up, um, you know, with, uh, with their salaries within our organization, um, you know, stepping back a little bit, um, you know, a few months ago when the state passed their budget, the corrections officers for, um, the state, the prison system got a really big pay jump and, you know, well-deserved. And I'm not mm -hmm. complaining about that, but um, I knew that, you know, they were making about the same hourly rate as our corrections officers here and with most, you know, county jails. But with that pay jump to start, you know, almost, you know, 10 to $12 an hour, how do you mm. compete with that? Yeah. So the first thing that the county did pretty quickly was a, a pay adjustment to our corrections officers. Mm. And I, I really feel in central Wisconsin, we were probably one of the first agencies to, to get on this quickly because yeah. we didn't want to lose anybody to the state. We want to take care of our employees, um, especially when we have a new facility that we're opening up. 
<clears throat> well, as we looked at all of our salaries, you know, we do we do still have a union for the deputy sheriffs, mm-hmm. so their raises are established. And what we found out with uh, their their hourly rates and other benefits, our sergeants were making more of our than our patrol lieutenants. Hmm. Um, and that was pointed out to me in our administration. And I'm like, okay, well, we have a compression issue. Hmm. Um, so I took it to human resources and, you know, laid it out. Here are the issues. What what can we do? And I'll be honest, uh, Kim McGrath, our HR director, was awesome. Hmm. She she looked at it, researched it even more, agreed. Um, so we're in the process now of making those salary adjustments for our upper administration. Hmm. You know, and, and that that's very important because if you look at – you know, the future of your organization, you have to take care of them with uh, not only salary, but benefits. And there was a pretty big difference between the people that are in the union and the people that aren't in the union. We should try to be at least comparable, um, at least with benefit wise. Mm -hmm. And then obviously salary, the the more you move up the rank, the more you're going to get paid. So um, uh, next week we meet with uh, one another committee for the county board and, and we'll discuss that. And, uh, hopefully we can get that through because, um, it'd be very, um, I'm really proud of the fact, not only with our HR director, but, you know, our team coming together and saying, okay, how can we solve this? What are, what are the ways we can do that? And I'm confident that we'll, we'll get it through and uh, it'll make our team better. We've talked about this before. It, it can be difficult already to recruit people for this mm-hmm. industry and staying competitive uh, uh, county-wise, state-wise is, mm-hmm. is vital going forward to not only keeping good people, but bringing in new people you know, and recruiting good people. Yeah. Uh, it's really good to hear that you and, and everybody being on point on that, getting yeah. on that right away. Not, not, I appreciate so often whenever we come into something where, it, there, you know, it, it's not, uh, it wouldn't be far-fetched to say a year from now we're having the same conversation, yeah. but 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 we're behind the eight ball. We're we're behind yeah. on it. You guys are ahead of a lot of these things, getting ahead of the curve on some of that stuff. And for everything we can, it only benefits us because there's we all know that there's tons of stuff we have no idea what's coming. Right. You know, tomorrow brings a whole new set of problems, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. So it's really encouraging to hear. And uh, it, it's important also to people out there, especially anybody young out there listening yeah. and, and looking about what career to get into. Yeah. Here's a wonderful career. I know <clears throat> I talk to a lot of young uh, people that are, are getting into the arts and everything. And one of the main things I tell them is have a day job. You can chase your dream, have a day job. Don't be a, a struggling artist, be a surviving artist. Yeah. And most of them are like, the big thing that they're looking for is, can, well, what is an industry that I know is going to be there in five or 10 years? Well, here's one. <laughs> Here, here's definitely an industry that's going to be there in uh, you know, 10, 15 years We're and everything. Away. Yeah. No. So uh, it's certainly something to think about as well. Yeah. Like I said, it, it'll set up, you know, the future of the department. You know, when you, you look at people that are willing to, you know, all right, I want to get into a, a leadership role. It's not about the money. You're not mm. going to get rich, no. but, you know, you're, you're going to see that you're going to be taken care of fairly. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're speaking with Sheriff Sean Becker from the Wood County Sheriff's Department. And again, a big shout out to Wisconsin Rapids Community Media. Got a couple minutes left, sir. I did yeah. have one thing I was going to end up on. Uh, did you have something? You uh, Anything else you wanted to add? Uh, shout out to Vince Beagle. Um, Vince yeah. is going to come back in town. Uh, I had connected with him through his dad, Rocky. Uh, we've got a conference that we're putting up, and uh, the Badger Sheriff's uh, Association meets or, or trains every quarterly. And we're hosting it in uh uh, Wood County up in Marshfield, and uh, I was helping out set that that conference up, and I'm like, well, we can get a speaker in, and so we reached out, and he's coming. So, awesome. Um, uh, big shout out to Vince and his family. Um, it's not easy when he's a, a young man with a family that, um, you know, he lives in Florida and is going to make the, uh, you know, going to come up to, to to do a speech for yeah. us and and hang out with probably you know about two thirds of the sheriffs that. Are in Wisconsin, so very uh, very proud of him to to make the sacrifice to come up and spend some time with us, and you know he'll get a chance to hang out with his family as well. Yeah, he's gonna see. Yeah, you yeah, know, Midwesterners, we always want to come back. Uh, uh-huh. It's always nice to be able to do that. Uh, shout out to have a local favorite come back. That's mm-hmm. that's really good to hear. Good on him. Yeah, we're wrapping up. Uh, I did want to mention uh, on a good note, a really fun note. You guys got a new dog. I heard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Is that why you're tired? Is that yeah. why? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. No. Yeah. Um, we had uh, both Julie and I grew up with collies, you know, and um, and then when we had our family, we got a collie, and 
and she lasted uh, about 11 years and you know that moment that we all go through is so hard and i'm like never again we're never yep, gonna yep, get it yep. done never no nope. and it'd been eight years and i didn't realize julie had connected with a breeder up in uh, the up and um you know and she talked about it a few times and i just must have had a weak moment i said that's fine let's go get the dog yeah <laughs> so we did and uh, no it's been going good we had her about two weeks she had her first uh, local vet appointment Reader was uh, really good, but she's a puppy, so yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's why my eyes are a little, uh, yeah, you know, glazed over a little bit. <laughs> yeah. um, but hey, I'll be worth it then. Oh yeah, get the trainer the way you know we should and or want to, and yeah. that's awesome. Mm -hmm. and, and good on you guys. Good on you for it. Uh, yeah, okay. Enjoy, have fun. Yeah, we'll t when we talk next month, we'll see how I feel. <laughs> yeah. uh, and especially since I said that, now I almost kind of like volunteered for dog sitting. So no. you kind of you kind of put okay. me. I, I kind of walked this into that. This is being one. recorded. Yeah, isn't yeah. It? It's all uh, it's all documented now. So. Okay, I like it. Always like appreciate it. the time for yeah. me, man. Thank you so much for everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and a gigantic thank you to you, your team, everything you do for this community. You are appreciated. We see you. We're looking out for you. Stay safe out there thanks again thank for you. the time always uh, appreciate coming I want to send a big thank you as well to our friends at wisconsin rapids community media big thank you to them keep up the date on all the work that they are doing over there go to youtube type it in your search bar wisconsin rapids community media subscribe to their page and keep up to date on that work say hi to everybody over there for us uh and before we wrap up sir i did want to give people uh information on how they can reach out to you i yeah. keep calling you sir I, now now it's one of those things where it's in my head now it's like that so i'm just doing it for that we'll have to talk about that yeah well off air, off yeah, air. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if people do want to contact you yeah. about the meat or uh, some of the yeah. other things um, coming up. Give me up. a call. I mean, you can check us out on Facebook um, or just give us a call. 715-421-8701 dispatch. Um, otherwise, my direct line, 421-8705. I appreciate you. Thanks for the time, Sean. You bet. Well, and more Midday Magazine for you coming up on tomorrow on WFHR Locally Grown Radio.